Hello and welcome again. In the previous video, we talked about uh, how it was a hard problem to invert this function. Basically, what we had was a function with a cube, an element, and then take modulo some uh, product of two primes here. Now, uh, the way we kind of show that it's a hard problem is by putting this in Mathematic and showing that that was uh, took a long time to do it. Of course, that is not a proof. So. And that's, I want to emphasize that in here. So if a software cannot invert a function, it does not prove that the function is a one-way function. So what I did does not prove that the function I show you is a one-way function. It just gives evidence that it might possibly be a one-way function. Now, what am I saying possibly? Uh, the reason I'm saying that is because of this. And you will see in a second here. Uh, there are no proofs for the existence of one-way functions as far as September of 2016. Uh, what I mean by proofs is that there is a precise definition of a one-way function. Is. The definition we gave is not uh, the formal definition of the precise definition. It's an intuitive definition of the one-way function which serves our purposes which is just understand what a one-way function is but to prove that it's a one-way function you have to go to the uh, exact definition and actually do a proof of it so that's why i'm saying that uh, doing this with software is not really a proof so the example i showed you before uh, is not a proof that it's a one-way function it's just showing you that there is evidence that that will be a one-way function now of course, there is no proof, but it is believed that one-way functions do exist. And if they don't exist, then that will be a big trouble for cryptography. Uh, this problem of the existence of one-way functions, I mean, proving that they actually exist, is related to N and NP problems. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry. We don't go into that. It's basically just related to a very famous problem in computer science. So this one-way function, the existence of that, is a very important problem too. Now, even though there are no proofs, uh, the a function that I show you, which could be an example of a one-way function, there are some strong candidates for one-way functions. So there are uh, some functions that there probably are one-way functions. So the experts, uh, well, most at least most of them agree that there is a strong evidence that there will probably be uh, one-way function. So, so I'm going to show you uh, the three types um, that and I believe a one-way function. So the first one here is called the exponentiation modulo p, where of course p is a prime number and p is going to be uh, of course a large prime number. Uh, the second is an element alpha which is an special element of the numbers from 1 through p minus 1 these numbers from 1 to p minus 1 that are called cp star. Now, this is notation for a group, which will go into the details of what a group is later. So, for now, let's think about this just as a list of numbers. And this is an special element of this collection we, we call a generator. Now, we, we're going to talk about that, uh, that concept later. Now, basically, what that means is this. This is a generator if this happens. If this number to the p minus 1 divided by q is not congruent to 1 modulo p for all the q's that are prime divisors of p minus 1. So if this happens here, that means that there is a generator. Now, uh, don't uh, worry yourself too much with this because this is the technicality of being a generator in this particular uh, group, which we'll talk about that later. Basically, what you have to take, uh, pick from here is that p is a prime number, which is large, and alpha is a special kind of number. Now, what is the first uh, strong candidate for one-way function? So this function here, f, that takes elements from cp star, which is the collection from 1 to p minus 1, and gives me elements of that set 2. So those are the outputs. And the function is defined by this. I take my special element, alpha, I raise it to the x power, to the input and then modulo the large prime p. 
So let me give you an example here so with actual numbers. So let's say I, I choose my P to be this, uh, it's not a really large prime, but it's decent in terms of our things that we are doing is large. And I'm going to choose my alpha with the property there. So the alpha that I chose here is 10,217. Now this number that is here, this alpha is a generator of CP star, which is this collection here. And only thing that that means is just keep in mind this is just a special element. All right, so if we choose alpha to be like that, so you cannot choose any alpha, it has to be that particular with that particular property of being a generator. If you do that, then you take uh, this one-way function, which is uh, this f of x, which is this alpha, which is in this case 10,217 to the x, to the input modulo p, where p is that uh, large prime here. So that's the first example of uh, a strong candidate of a one-way function, which is uh, the uh, the name here, which I'm going to scroll out here, is exponentiation modulo p. So that's the first example. Let's look at the second example, of uh, which is believed to be a one-way function. So this is the R RSA function. We actually have seen this uh, function before. This is the function that I talked about in the last video. So you can construct this is strong... Uh, uh, the strong evidence of one-way function a candidate here, which is basically what you do is you choose two, these uh, primes P and Q, which are different. You multiply, you get a number N, and then you choose an integer E in such a way that the greatest common divisor between E and P minus one, Q minus one is equal to one. Now, this is should be really familiar for you if, we, if you already watched the videos on RSA. This is exactly how you choose the this is the public exponent with this property this p minus 1 q minus 1 is phi of n is the the euler function of this number n that is here so that's exactly what the rs that's why it's called the rsa function and what the rsa function is is what you think it is is the function that is uh, used for encryption so what you do is the function goes from zn to zn so basically takes inputs that are uh, in here so numbers that are less then n, and then you take x to the e, whatever that e is, the public exponent modulo n. So that's basically the encryption function of the RSA. So that is a strong candidate for a one-way function. Now, if you want to see an example, look at the example in the last video, the one we did with Mathematica. So that's an example and a strong, um, probably a one-way function, strong candidate for that. Okay, let's look at the third example. Uh, this is called the Rabin function, and the way it's set up is like this. I'm going to take two primes, P and Q, different primes, but they have to be in a special uh, way. The, the way is that both of them should be congruent to 3 modulo 4. Basically, what that means is I take the primes, when I divide them by 4, I'll get remainder 3. So, Or another way to say is that P is a multiple of 4 plus 3 and same for Q. So they are chosen to be, of course, again, large. And I get again, I get again the, the N, which is the product of two primes. And I'm gonna introduce a new set here, uh, which I'm gonna call QN. And QN here is the set of all quadratic residues modulo N. Now, if you don't know what that means, uh, this basically is just the collection that I have here. So basically what that is, is you just take each number from 1 to n minus 1, you square it, and you take the remainder modulo n, which is n is the product of these two primes. So this is this collection here. This is where the function is going to act. So it's going to be the input of my uh, one-way function, the possibly one-way function. All right, so basically just is taking modulus here. So the function is going to be defined by this. It goes from Qn to Qn, from the quadratic residues to the quadratic residues, and then just square the input and then take modulo n. Okay, let me give you an example to give you an idea what uh, this function does. So I'm going to choose small primes in this case. So the primes I'm going to choose are 11 and 19, and these are primes that have the property that both of them are congruent 
to 3 modulo 4. And remember, that's how I have to choose these two primes for the deriving function. Now, the number n is going to be the product of these two numbers, which is, of course, 209. And my Q of 209, what that's going to be is going to be 1 modulo 200, 1 square modulo 209, 2 square modulo 209, 3 square modulo 209, and so on and so forth until I complete all my list here, which is exactly what I have here. So you're going to do this 1 square modulo 209, 2 square modulo 209, up to 208 square modulo 209 so that's basically a long list list here uh, when you do that there will be some repetitions so i uh, remember because this is a set a collection i don't have to write down the repetitions this is actually the whole collection of the quadratic residues modulo 209 so this is the, my my set here uh, and now my function what it's going to do is going to take inputs in of course the quadratic residues modulo 209 and gives me this now the function is defined like this I, I square the input and I take modulo 209 this will be a one-way function again I am putting here this in quotations is because this is not proven yet is this strong evidence that all of these functions that I just show you are uh, one-way functions um, and so that's basically all I wanted to tell you oh, for this video. So what you have to keep in mind is that there are uh, some functions uh, that would probably be one-way function. Of course, that's not proven yet. But uh, for now, we're using those in cryptography. So we have, we're trusting that those are one-way functions. Um, so in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, another kind of it's not another kind, but there is a, a one-way uh, functions that have something that's called a trapdoor. And that basically what it is, is a way to invert the function if you know an extra information. So there are believed to be one-way functions, but if you throw a little bit of extra information there, you will be able to uh, uh, invert uh, the function. Exactly what happens with the RSA function. Let me scroll all the way up here. You can invert this. Invert basically means I want to know what uh, is the plain text, if I know the cipher text. And remember, to do this, I need to get the number D, uh, which is the private key. So that private key will be the trapdoor. Uh, that's for this particular uh, function that is here. But of course, that's a general concept. So in the next video, we'll talk about uh, at that particular concept. So I will see you in the next video.